Alright, and we're back. More alone in the dark. I wasn't so alone a minute ago, man. There was two monsters on my ass. They better rape my face. Now, I could go in this room over here, but I'm not going to do that because there's actually a monster that spawns. That's a bit dangerous. Kind of scary. Oh, what? Hello? Oh, shit. No, go away. No, you're bad. I don't even know what your problem is. So, there were murders in this place? Fragment of the Myth of the Golden Fleece. Translation, Edouard de Villeban. Hesperides Publications. Then, Perseus came across Ichios, who had been turned into stone. He spoke to his companions and said, Beware of the Medusa. He who looks into their eyes is doomed to the same fate as that which befell poor Ichios, and will never more set eyes on Seraphos. Must we go blindfolded? asked Imalopes. Take up your bronze shields and polish them until they flash in the sun, answered Perseus. Fill your hearts with courage. May Artemis guide us as though we were an arrow from her quiver. But Imalopes was not satisfied. Why do that, Perseus? Is three inches of sharpened metal not enough to destroy these accursed creatures? Then Perseus drew his sword, which shone and glittered in the sun, and with it he dazzled Imalopes. Now what can you see? The companions of Zeus' sons laughed. Let us set to work, so that our shields may shine like mirrors. Okay, so that was the that was the hint. As to how to take down the two creatures. Although they really didn't explain exactly how those were Gorgon and why they would have turned you into stone. Yeah, he looks legit. I'm not even running down this hall. Fuck you. <laughs> no shit! It's the smallest compression scheme ever. Holy crap, it wasn't actually even rendering anything. It was absolute zero. Yeah, it, like, it stopped updating. Is it just like a black filter? Whatever makes the rendering smaller. Yeah, see, the first time I came in here, I did not see that ghost. It spawned, it just turns into some balls that chase you around and one hit kill you. So, you can't touch her, you have to get around her. I think it's also because I was playing the 3DO version, which was really bad on the palette. Alright, so just sort of meander around this way. Maybe I'll show you guys sometime on, but this is yeah, its one of the most fucking annoying enemies in the game. Like, it can go through loading screens. So. Alright. Now to deal with this issue over here. I have to use... As far as I recall, yeah, the oil can. The lamp is full? I thought I said the lamp was empty. I picked it up. Or I guess it just filled it up. Right. It's a little bit more intuitive than I would say uh, Shadowgate was. Was that have an open?
opening and closing all sorts of shit to get all that done. Oh, really? Really now? Yeah, I bet. I was alone in the dark. Okay, yeah, let's use my brain. Because I have one of those. Drop put. Bullets. Those are definitely useful. You know, for a game that was as experimental as this is, it really turned out very well. I and mean, it's kind of surprising. I mean, rarely do you have something that's this well balanced for a first try. It makes you wonder, like, what kind of content they had intended to, this to, to be in this game that never was included. Because I'd love to know, like, what other stuff they wanted to put into this. Alright, I should change off now. As it will still continue to burn. I think it actually continues to burn, period. Maybe not. Okay. Now, this next book gives you a little hint, and I'll let you all guess as to what that is. A Brightness from Afar, by Lord Bolliskin, an account of his celebrated voyage to New England, 1824, Alistair Publications, Cambridge. Following a splendid journey, the sunny harbor came into sight. The locals were much impressed with one's arrival in their midst. One had time to sketch several of them and notice signs of degeneracy. Some children showed one their queer hands that would inspire uneasiness. Is it like the, the gay hands test? Upon the promise of a few coins, a child has undertaken to reveal to one a most prodigious phenomenon of a natural order. One admits to being skeptical as to the prodigiousness of the marvel, whatever it may be. Indeed, one suspects it to be little more than an evening stroll to some charming wooden hut situated in the forest hereabouts. One will nonetheless go, for it is always well to submit to such local enthusiasms. No, no it is not. Just no. As Charlie the Unicorn has realized many times. One admits to being somewhat flabbergasted. The Milky Way shone like the fires of the apocalypse from the inky celestial vault. Certain distant stars, normally invisible to the naked eye, were clearly visible, glittering indeed with a strange intensity. The heavy clouds that had settled above the village had no hold over that place. It would be pointless to offer here the names of the constellations one perceived in utter clarity. Apart from the interminable length of such a list, one might conceivably risk being charged with exaggeration. The cross cast its shadow on the ground. The sea in the distance was dead calm. Tonight, one will return to that spot and draw those stars. Tomorrow night, one will at last see Halley's Comet in all its brilliance. The youngster will carry torches, despite one's developed sense of direction. Honed by years of travel, one feels incapable of finding one's way through the dark forest unaided. The drawings will, one is convinced, set light to the souls of men. Such a moon! One moon! must count of the craters so sharply was their definition. Loath as one is to seem excessive in one's appraisal, one cannot but feel that the forest the, clearing is indeed a place outside the I common laws of pronoun. time and space. Surely it is not an hallucination. How strange to consider that idle conversation 
Some research in the British Museum and a voyage to this backward village should culminate in so astounding a discovery. It may be that others have noticed the extraordinary nature of that place. How else could one explain the presence of that cross? Okay. Now, yeah, actually, I think I'm mix missing a book. Yeah, I think it was in the other room, but I was I mistook it. And the the other book just tells you, you know, this strange item that are in the presence of armor. The the knights of or soldiers of uh, it's like this the conquistadors it just caused their armor to become super heavy and they collapsed to the ground. And this idol was that.